Uh, time once again to sit you in your little rocking chair. Greetings, my friends out there in cyberspace. Today is special interest day. That was our topic at our support group this week. And that is my favorite subject, because it gives me the chance to talk about my favorite subject, carousels. People who have known me not for very long usually know that I'm crazy about carousels. And I have been so since, since, well, as long as I can remember. But my teachers in school used to get so mad, they'd be like, I've had it up to here with merry-go-rounds. Go figure. I will show you the first book ever written on the subject of carousels, A Pictorial History of Carousels by Fred Freed. It was written in 1964, the year that I was born. And he is the founder of the National Carousel Association, which started in 1973. I was, what, eight, nine years old then? Where's this stuff been all my life? I didn't find out about carousel culture, as I call it, until the late 1980s, when the Franklin Mint brought out this series of ceramic figurines. I have the whole set. They're back in the living room. And they came from this book, Painted Ponies which came out in the late 1980s, I believe. I remember when I bought the figurines, looking forward to all the information that came with each one every month. And it all came from this book. And that's how I met my friend Lorraine, too. I was, she was doing an art show at Lindsay Homecoming Weekend, and there was a print of this here horse. And I was like, oh my god, I know that horse. It's the Elyon's American Beauty Rose horse. And she had been on that horse on her honeymoon when it was at the Circus World Carousel in Florida. And we made arrangements for me to visit her and see her copy of Painted Pony's book, which I eventually bought a copy of my own. And in it was a subscription to Carousel News and Trader magazine, which I have been subscribing to ever since, like for the last 20 years or so. Right? Lately it's changed. It's become, was it Carousel and Automatic Music News? And most of us aren't quite as interested in the let our subscriptions that laugh, lapse. Anyway, I brought those two books with me when I went to this thing tonight. And I'm sort of unloading my bag here as I talk. I've put a bunch of it on this rickety TV tray, and I don't want it to fall because I have something in here I want to show you. This is... Where is it? Criminy. Oh, here it is. This is what I made a couple weeks ago. Our support group went to this ceramics workshop, so I got to paint a plate. My husband says, did it ever occur to you to do anything other than a horse? Well, these neat curly swirly things along the frame are called acanthuses. An acanthus is the ancient plant found in the Mediterranean and parts of Africa and Euro Asia and Southern Europe. And it is quite ubiquitous in architecture and especially carousel art. It can be found on chariots, band organ facades, and a lot of Baroque and Rococo architecture, buildings, furniture. And it was at my last convention that I learned that Acanthus was the correct name for the curly swirly fiddly doos found in these places. And this is a book that I got at the last convention. There's a carousel horse in here somewhere. Uh, I, it was just so refreshing to learn about all this. Bob Yorberg really speaks with passion and knowledge about the subject of acanthuses, and I had to have a copy of his book. And this is one of my latest acquisitions to my collection of carousel related stuff. This is the book that I bought at my first carousel convention. I remember seeing it for sale when I was in Holland. My mom and I went to a, to a barrel organ rally at the Open Air Museum in Arnhem. But then I, I got a book on how to carve carousel horses there. I could have bought this book. I bought this one at my first convention in 1991. And it's kind of big and heavy. That's the reason I haven't bought Charlene, Charlotte Baker's book yet as much as I want it, maybe next year. Uh, this is a European book, but it's got examples of North American carousel art. There are three basic styles of carousel art, which I didn't really get to talk about this evening. There's Philadelphia, 
there's Coney Island, and there's County Fair. And Philadelphia would include, obviously, Philadelphia Toboggan Company, E. Joy Morris, which were their predecessors, and Philadelphia Denzel, of course. I grew up with the Center Island Denzel Carousel. It is a classic menagerie. They were going to auction that off in 1989. I'm glad they didn't. I was one of the people who protested against them doing so. The late 1980s were a dark time of carousels, a lot of them being dismantled and broken up. Crystal Beach was a prime example. It broke my heart the last time I went there, their last season before closing. They didn't even have a decency to wait until the park closed. The carousel was gone long before then. They had a pretty nice 1950s Alan Herschel, but it wasn't the same. I miss my beloved hippocampus. That was the first time I rode such a creature. Mythical seahorse, half fish. And of course, uh, I brought this along to the tonight's meeting with me. This is my brag book. It's got like all my newspaper articles. Um, there's my wedding dress with the carousel horses around the bottom. Uh, shows that I've done, quilts that I've made. I am actually writing a book about all this stuff. I haven't gotten around to get it published yet. My friend Fede is supposed to be helping me. And it's just such an overwhelming process. Oh, are we still there? Yeah, we're still recording. That's funny. I saw I saw a weird little flash, but we're still good. Whoops. Stay there. Steady. Where was I? I wanted to show them the quilts that I'm working on. These are some unfinished works in progress. Lately, I am surrounded by unfinished works in progress, but there's this one that I'm working on now. I got the top row done. What's that say? Don't don't give up, your miracle is on its way. And it's a little girl who was at the library during our art show. She designed this. And then this is my Guelph birthday horse. I designed this when Jeanette and I were in Guelph for my 50th birthday. And then we have here the library horse. One of the ladies who worked at the library designed this one. And I was glad to find some nice alphabet material to coordinate with that. And this is, this one says, God loves you too much to let you stay in mediocrity. I believe uh, Joel Olstein said that, and I thought that was a good motto. This is Patience, a dental lion with, this idea was inspired from the, from the library outside New York. Well, in New York, outside the library in New York. <laughs> Oh, duh, I'm getting a little discombobulated here. Just so much that I want to be able to show you and so much that I want to want to be able to make someday. I want so badly to get caught up on all these projects. These are some of my other unfinished works. I just, I just uh, pinned them all together like a booklet. I'm doing, not although not carousel related, I've been having fun doing a quilt with Aboriginal motifs. I need three more to finish this one. There's a Thunderbird, another Thunderbird, and another Thunderbird. And can you see, it's kind of hard. I'm doing another quilt with white on white. It's all these different, I call it primer white. It's all these different carousel horses. And it's the texture of the stitch that carries the imagery. This is a British two-seater galloper. British horses go clockwise, North American ones go counterclockwise, so I have a dental standard here, and the Ilion's logo. Man, this was great fun to embroider. All these little angels on all these pretty little horses. And that's, I'm going to do a trilogy of the different styles of carousel art in the quilts that I've told you about. And I want to do a lilac carousel horse quilt. See, I have a dental stander here with, with lilacs. And this one's got lilacs too. It's a Muller stander. And this is for my county fair quilt. This is a patriotic Parker horse. Anyway, I think I need a drink of water, so I'm going to call it a George for now. Ta-ta!